Hey everyone, happy leaf day today. My name is Chris, I'm a Houston toad keeper here at the Houston Zoo. And today in celebration of leaf year, we're bringing you guys behind the scenes to take a look at our Houston toad recovery program. So this is room one, this is my room. We have about 250 toads in here. This is one room out of three. So altogether we have about 800 Houston toads in our collection. A uh, Houston toad is an endangered species. It's endemic to Texas, meaning it's only found uh, within a couple of counties really uh, here, kind of west of Houston. It's called the Houston toad, although they are no longer found in the Houston area. These guys went, uh, were extirpated from the Harris County area around 1975. That was the last time anyone saw a Houston toad calling in the Houston area. Um, and so a lot of the issues that we have with Houston toads today are the same that we've had in the last couple of decades. They are what we call habitat specialists. They love deep sandy soils and they need a nice canopy cover and that's the habitat they prefer in order to thrive. And so due to urbanization, uh, conversion from land, from you know, native land to agriculture, all of these kind of affect the Houston toad population and that's the reason we've been seeing declines. Um, so here at the Houston Zoo, uh, our job is to take care of and manage a nice diverse collection of uh, genetics of these uh, Houston toads in order to be able to put them back out into the wild. And so uh, coming up here next week, we start breeding season. We will begin pairing up toads, male and female. And you know, within, uh, within a week, we will have the females will lay a bunch of eggs. And the females can lay anywhere from you know, 2,000 to 12,000 eggs. So they typically average around five to 7,000 eggs per female. And so every week for the next 10 weeks, we will be running out um, anywhere from 100,000 eggs onward each week. So last year we sent out 1.3 million eggs. And so we hope to do something similar to that this year. If we can make a million, that would be awesome. awesome. But uh, that's, that's our job here at the Houston Zoo. This guy right here is a Houston toad. Looks like it's female. And so one of the common questions I get is, Chris, you know, you say these guys are no longer in Houston, but I see toads in my backyard all the time. And the most common toad in the Houston area currently is probably going to be the Gulf Coast toad. If you're seeing a toad in Houston, that's going to be the species 99.9% .9 of the time that you're looking at. Um, there's a few differences between them. Um, you kind of got to be a big toad nerd to really tell, but, you know, a few key differences are on top of the toad's head, we have these cranial crests. And actually, let me try to pull a toad out so I can get you guys a better visual of that. But a real cool way to tell just frogs in general apart and toads is by their call. So these guys are explosive breeders. When the temperatures and rain humidity are right, they will all come out. The males will go to the ponds. They will begin calling. Let me see if I can grab a male right here. Be real careful with them. So I'm wearing gloves with this guy. And that's really to protect him from me. You know, we have a lot of oils and who knows what on our hands. And these guys pretty much uh, take in a lot of, you know, water and other substances, substances through their skin. Um, and so, you know, the gloves are a little bit for, mostly for him. And, you know, it's nice not to get peed on by a toad as well. Um, that is one of their defense mechanisms. Along with, if you look on the top of their head, they have these nice little parasoid glands up here. And that's actually one way you can kind of tell the difference between a Houston toad and a Gulf Coast toad. So. Houston toads, the, uh, you know, their glands are pretty yeah, kind of potato shaped. And then the Gulf Coast toad, you actually see a nice triangular type shape to them. Kind of got to get close to the toad to be able to tell, see the difference. Um, but that is one way. Also on top of their head, this one you can kind of see them. They have what's called cranial crest, these little ridges that are kind of between their eyes. They go down and then to the side of their eye, they make a little L shape for Houston toads. For Gulf Coast toads, uh, these guys kind of Y out and they'll make a nice little Y shape. But that's one way. And like I said before, they all have specific calls. So the call alone, these guys have a little higher frequency call than a, uh, <laughs> and there's the P, uh, than a Gulf Coast toad. Uh, and you can also tell by the throat patch. So underneath the males, at least, the males will have these nice, it's really a dark blue throat patch. Um, and when they call, this little sack right here fills up with air and they're able to really resonate that noise. And that's when you get those nice, beautiful frog calls. Um, so Houston toads, they come out, they're dark underneath when you look at them, but they'll be kind of blue when they expand out. Yeah, if you were holding this guy's toad, you could hear him vibrate. You would feel him vibrating right now. He's uh, making a little bit of noise. Um, I don't want to stress him out too bad, so I'm going to go ahead and put this guy back. But in the Gulf Coast toads, it'll pretty much be a yellow or tan throat patch on those guys. I'll bring out a female too for you guys just to see. Now typically, it's very common in frogs and toads that the females are bigger than the males. 
Um, you kind of see a little bit of that in Houston toads, though not as pronounced, but a lot of reasons that's for, so the females can uh, carry more eggs and they can, uh, you know, have a higher, uh, I guess for toads, it's going to be strands. They lay eggs out in uh, these long, they lay these long kind of black pearly eggs and they're coated with a nice little gelatin and little strings essentially. So the question is, uh, what is the importance of helping save this endangered Houston toad? Uh, well, you know, everyone has their own reasons. For me, I really appreciate species diversity. Um, it's nice to have these animals that are supposed to be on the landscape out onto the landscape. Um, and they're also important for other organisms as well. They are part of the food chain. And so from every stage, from egg to tadpole to adult, these guys are getting preyed on. And so, you know, we may release thousands and thousands of eggs. Uh, but about one in every thousand may make it to adulthood, essentially. Um, so they have a very low survival rate, which is why they produce so many eggs at one time. And like I said earlier, they're explosive pond breeders, right? So the males are going out to the pond, they're all calling, the females are attracted to the call, and then the males will, how they breed is the males will hop on the backs of the females, and as the females drop their strands of eggs, the males will fertilize them. So it kind of helps out when they breed like that because as they're calling, they're vulnerable to predators. So being a loud, noisy animal at night draws the attention of everything from raccoons to snakes. And when you have the numbers on your side, you're less likely to get picked off. So we have a question. It's how many egg strands did we release in 2023? I'm not sure on the number of strands, but we did release 1.3 million eggs. So in room one, this is the room you're in right now. Again, this is one out of three. Uh, we will pair up, for the next 10 weeks, we'll essentially pair up 10, to 10 pairs of toads every week, right? So best case scenario, we make a pairing. The females, all 10 drop eggs, and the same thing happens in room two and room three, and we can send 30 strands of eggs out to our reach researchers at Texas State. Uh, the last holdout for these guys, I mean, they're scattered through a couple of counties, but I would say the main population, the largest population we know of is in the Bastrop County, and that is where we do our releases. So we work with our partners at Texas State, um, us along with Fort Worth Zoo and Dallas Zoo who are also producing toads. And so, again, we're starting breeding season along with our partners. And so every week, us, Fort Worth, Dallas, will all be sending toads to our Texas State researchers and they will deliver those toads into um, specific ponds. And currently we're releasing them in a place called Griffith League Ranch. It's a Boy Scout ranch. Um, and that is the main home for a lot of our releases. So these guys are currently not on exhibit, uh, but you know they probably will be here, give us a couple months and we'll get them back into the reptile house. Um, I know Children's Zoo does have some as a handling animal. We take that out fairly, you know, from time to time. Um, and I think they do have a home, they might have a home on exhibit for them to go to as well, but they're back and forth from being a handling animal and on exhibit. So we got a question, what is their diet? Uh, that's a perfect question because I'm actually going to get ready to feed some for you guys right now. So we're going to feed this tank over here. So what these guys would normally eat in the wild is a lot of arthropods, you know, insects, really anything they can fit into their mouths. Here at the zoo, we feed them crickets. I'm going to pull this female out. Get that mouse out. But yeah, so the main staple of their diet here is crickets. I have these guys dusted with a nice little vitamin supplement. And we'll also feed them doobie roaches and kind of mix up their diet from time to time. But crickets seem to be the staple, at least here. Uh, but like I said, the wild invertebrates, if they can find small vertebrates to eat, they will eat those as well. And you can kind of see these guys picking off, well, some successfully, some not so successfully. Uh, but as they pick up crickets or anything really, um, they will actually, you'll kind of see their eyes close. And what they're doing is that those eyeballs will actually push down on the memory behind them, and that kind of helps them push the food down into their throat. So it's a very weird case of their eyeballs helping them eat. So you see them flicking out that tongue. They have a nice little sticky tongue that they use to, um, to flick out and catch, uh, stick onto their prey. Yeah. 
All right, we're going to close this one up. We got another tank we can feed. And guys, feel free to put your questions in the comments section below, and we'll do our best to try to answer those in real time. So we'll feed these guys about twice a week. They get about a gram worth of crickets each feeding for each toad. And again, guys, if you are not aware, we have started breeding, well, we are about to start breeding season. So like I was saying before, for all of you just tuning in, uh, in the next 10 weeks, uh, every week for the next 10 weeks, we will be uh, making runs out to Bastrop, to the Bastrop area and we will be handing off uh, strands of eggs, essentially, to our researchers. These females can lay probably on average around 5,000 eggs. Um, and so if we're having our best day, we're taking about 30 strands a, a week out to the Bastrop area. But, you know, it's not always the case. So, <laughs> so what's going on here is uh, pretty much what happens in the wild, right? Uh, what we call this is amplexus. And so on plexus, this little male comes up behind the female, kind of grabs them between under the armpits and holds on. And typically this would be in a more pond setting. And the female will start laying her strands of eggs. The male will be fertilizing right behind them. It's all external, um, but that's pretty much how uh, Houston toads are made. And so anytime you hear frogs chorusing, this is uh, the end result that they're looking for, essentially. Typically more males in the wild than females. Um, so it's a, it's a fight to see, you know, who gets to reproduce with the female. Sometimes you'll have multiple males trying to, trying to stack on top one of another. <laughs> but yeah, it's part of their anatomy as well. So if you were to look closely at the Houston toads' thumbs on the males, they're real callousy and fat, and that allows them to really grip the females. So every part of their anatomy is made to help them be successful in the wild. So we got another question. What is their lifespan in the wild? So in the wild, these guys uh, live typically around two to three years. A four-year-old toad is a pretty old toad out in the wild. Like I said, they get predated on very frequently. And so if they can just live long enough to reproduce once or twice, that is a success for them. Here in captivity, our oldest toad, I believe, is going on around 12 years old. So they live a lot longer in captivity than they would in the wild. Um, but you know, as the toads get older, they start getting health issues as well. Do you ever hear them chorus here? Yeah, so one question is, do we ever hear them chorus here? Uh, we do, we, you know, we don't, uh, we don't always, we don't want them to chorus most of the time because we want them laying at specific times during the breeding season. Uh, but they will go into a chorus every now and then. If you're lucky, we'll actually, we could hear one, you know, today. Uh, they'll do it infrequently throughout this time of year for sure. Yeah, so one of the questions is how can we help save these guys in the wild? So, you know, every time you come to the zoo, really, uh, you're Ticket sales go towards uh, our Houston Toad program. Um, we really couldn't do this without the funding that our guests provide, um, and so that's one of the best. I mean, one of the best ways to come is just by coming to the zoo. If you are a landowner in Bastrop, I will also say, uh, you know, get in contact with U.S. Fish and Wildlife. They have a lot of cool options for people who have really good. Houston Toad Habitat, safe harbor agreements and whatnot, and you know you can be a part of the uh, the program really to help save these guys in the wild. Habitat's our main concern. Um, it's not just about putting toads back out in the wild. We have to have a place for these toads to go back out into the wild too. All right, guys. Thanks for tuning into the Facebook live today. Again, have a happy leap day and see us next time.